So the important thing to remember with exercise testing and programming is that everything must be individualized based on the type of cancer the person has, the stage of cancer, the treatments that they've uh, undergo well, either currently or in the past. If a person has anemia, they are going to have to limit their intensity. They're just not going to have enough oxygen to, to do even probably moderate intensity aerobic work. Same thing if they're at risk of infection, they have to avoid higher intensities, keep their, their intensity below the area where they become short of breath or experience dyspnea. Obviously, if someone has nausea and vomiting, they should try you know, uh, to hold off on exercise until they're feeling better. People who have chronic bone pain will probably need to avoid things that have impact, so the pool might be a good option for them if they're feeling okay enough to do that. And most times you're going to have to avoid chemotherapy day. Although in the Cancer Exercise Trainer webinar, they said even if someone can't do anything, if they feel weak enough, they just want them to do some, you know, 10 minutes of light stretching range of motion exercises. So, you know, so even if they're really feeling low, to have them try to be active just a tiny bit, if that is possible. So the ACSM uh, programs, many of the same things, you know, for normal healthy adults, we can follow for persons with cancer. Aerobic training, your frequency, you know, you should be f very familiar with these by now. Frequency, intensity, time, and type. Strength training is definitely appropriate. We did not have any issues with the ladies in our breast cancer program. 70% of 1RM, and that should work out to about 8 to 12 repetitions. You may need to progress them a little slower than what you would a healthy population. Although we did evaluate the 1RM in the women here every month and then adjusted their weights based on their 1RM so that we are always at 70% of their current 1RM. Once again, out of the ACSM roundtable discussions, they are looking for more research on you know, exercise and bone health. There's really very little pain. Um, cardiovascular outcomes, I mentioned about the new study from Dr. Scott Powers on the doxorubicin and exercise. Um, looking at cost effectiveness as exercise. What is exercise cost effective versus other therapies or in, con um, in conjunction with other types of therapies? You know, there is, this is one area where if ACSM is able to really lobby, there really is a large potential for insurance coverage for this. For example, if someone gets physical therapy, if someone's a breast cancer survivor and she gets referred to physical therapy because of range of motion in the arm that was affected by a mastectomy or radiation, P, you know, um, PT is covered by insurance, but yet the exercise training is not. So there isn't a whole lot different in what we would do for the follow-up care for that. And, you know, definitely more studies to address generalizability and, you know, low participation, low sample rates. There definitely needs to be more studies in persons older than 65 to look at outcomes, more data in minorities, especially in persons of low income and education. Although that is really hard to do in the Schmidt study, the breast cancer exercise training study, they tried to do all kinds of incentives to get people of lower income to go to the study. They offered them parking passes, people got free memberships to the Y, and it was still a real challenge for them to do that.